Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas. This is uh, Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is our exclusive coverage of AWS reInvent Conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, which my co-host Dave Vellante. Uh, here live, day two, our next guest is Matt Van Berger, co-founder, CTO of City Tech. Welcome to The Cube. So, uh, Thanks, John. being a CTO, you got to love the tech of cloud, what's going on with Amazon. So give us your take quickly on, uh, one, Amazon's innovations. And how, how relevant is it relative to what they're saying in terms of like the tech geeks out there, coders, DevOps, what's your take on the tech that Amazon's rolling out? Uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, very, very innovative. Um, I think it's the biggest opportunities for uh, software developers, architects. You know, in the past you'd had to rely on uh, hardware people, set it up to servers, uh, infrastructure type folks. Now, you know, call an API to spin up a server or allocate storage. So it's completely, I think, turned things upside down as far as how IT is being done, how it can be done. Uh, for us, we're not an infrastructure company. We never have been, we've always been software. So it allows us to just jump in right away and offer a turnkey solution without having to build out data centers. Andy and Jassy in his keynote, very inspiring, really smart guy. Dave and I had a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with him, amazing guy. Um, but he talks about words like experiments in his keynote, he, and that was interesting, Dave. He said, you can run experiments, almost kind of saying, hey, you know, still early, um, but that's what a lot of people are using the cloud for. So my question to you is, as you, as you look at the cloud and other businesses, what, what's the mindset of the people using the cloud? Is it experimental? What's the path to full scale enterprise adoption? Yeah, you said two things, right? You got to be, be able to do experiment fast and then you got to be able to minimize collateral damage, right? <laughs> right, From, uh, yeah. So is, you see in that? Oh, we do. We see it, uh, I mean, we see adoption in, in various different, you know, different ways. Uh, sometimes people want to go full scale, get in, maybe for a specific application, but a lot of times our, our opportunities come around where um, maybe there's a performance issue with an on premise application and you know, we're helping them resolve that. And first thing we do is, let's spin that application up out on AWS. Because it's a known environment, known infra infrastructure. It's an experiment. Let's see how it performs there. Is it, you know, are there any issues with the, the software or the hardware it was running on? And then that grows out and says, hey, if it runs out there better, why not just move it out there? And can you guys help us to do that? I thought the cloud was supposed to be slower. <laughs> no, 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 we see I mean, that. performance wise. Yeah. So talk about City Tech a little yeah. bit. Um, when did you guys get started? Uh, we've been around since 2003. Yeah, okay, so you predated AWS. We did, yes. Right? So, yeah. talk about, I mean, three years in, AWS announces S3 and then EC2. So, take us back. Sure. In terms of your business, your business model, how it impacted that. Sure, sure. So, we're, we're a global consultancy. We specialized uh, primarily in general enterprise application development uh, type projects, uh, about middle, about 2005, 2006, we started getting into large-scale web content management uh, implementations and uh, started seeing the fact that we needed to have a development environment that we could stand up to develop our projects on. And uh, what we initially did was leveraged AWS for those type of purposes. Uh, it was more of just utility for us. It wasn't a strategic area for us to get into. Uh, but as Amazon uh, started releasing more services, uh, public cloud computing infrastructure as service became more popular, we started defining uh, our business around uh, Amazon Web Services. What was, your what was your development environment before that? Was it? Uh, standing up servers in the back room, trying to make use of uh, servers, infrastructure on our client premise, which always was a, a big drag on the project, you know, from timeline perspective. Yeah. So it was always, we got to find some gear to run this stuff on. Yes. Um, and, and Amazon's perfect because we, you know, we didn't want to build all the data center, that's for sure. I didn't want to get into infrastructure, big, large investments for. So we'll for doing use our that. clients. We'll use our spin clients. up a few servers in the closet. Yeah. Okay. To get by. And then 06, AWS comes out. It's early days. Yeah. You guys hopped right on it. Is that we right? We started experimenting with it ourselves, looking at it. You know, we probably were a little bit pessimistic as at the very beginning too. Is this really going to, you know, provide the performance and everything else? We were really attracted to the API, uh, the way that Amazon architected their services where it was more API based first before the beautiful interface. Where a lot of vendors go for the glitz up front and then you ask how you automate things in the back end. That's coming. Amazon flipped it around, <laughs> yeah, right? right? They okay. said here, let's build these fundamental pieces of the architecture, let's enable them through APIs and then we'll have partners and other people build those beautiful front ends. Uh, so we really like that because we know we're software developers, we love automation and that just fit right into where we wanted to go. What was the learning curve like? to get up 
into that Amazon environment, learn the API, you know, I, that whole thing. Yeah, the, I think from, because it's really software focused, uh, the learning curve was not as great as if we just wanted to start a team and create a, a develop a data center and, and have hardware and, and things like that. Um, I think it is an interesting uh, role that you know, the, 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 the skills that one might need to be able to maintain, it's uh, definitely half or more software you know, development type skills, and the other half would be uh, more operations, you know, operating system type stuff. So when DevOps is really the, the key role. John was um, yeah. talking about when we were down in New York City, and we, you know, as John pointed out, we use AWS for you know, one of the platforms that we, we have, and John started giving Andy Jassy feedback. Remember that? <laughs> so there's, some, there's like three or four things that I think you should do. And remember, he yeah. took it really seriously. He's like, hold on a second. And he started writing them down. So my question to you is, is as, so in the early days, AWS had you know, a lot of white space. Sure. Yeah. Um, can you give an example of some feedback that you guys gave Amazon that they actually implemented that, that impacted your business? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we gave a lot of feedback early on when uh, Route 53 came out. Uh, the uh, DNS provider uh, capability. Uh, we thought it lacked a few features, and uh, as, pa as a, a partner of Amazon since the beginning, we've had uh, routine kind of calls with their architects, solution architects and things like that, and we provide some feedback as, as to the features that we think um, that Route 53 would need to have in order for us to rely on it and not have to worry about other DNS providers. So essentially, your business model is you got this commodity infrastructure, which is AWS, you build value on top of that, Mm -hmm. You create uh, 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 managed services yeah. as well as you're writing applications with your clients. That's, that's so, correct. So, so talk about the types of applications and talk about your engagements with customers. Give us some examples. Sure, sure. So first types of applications, we've uh, grown to be uh, have expertise in the large scale web content management space. Uh, so today, maybe a new term is web experience management and that's large scale web, websites for uh, Fortune 100, 500 companies also mobile applications on top of that. Uh, so what we did was uh, we took that experience in the domain and expertise uh, through a couple of other partners, Adobe is one of our partners, and we brought that platform out to AWS. And uh, today we provide a managed hosting service for web experience management, specifically the Adobe platform, uh, and we run it on AWS. So our clients might be uh, you know, worldwide type organizations that uh, require multiple languages to be delivered, require content to be delivered efficiently, no matter where their customers are in the world. And for us, uh, as a smaller organization, we can bring that platform out to the cloud, we can deliver it globally, because AWS has a global footprint of infrastructure, uh, without, again, having to invest in all that infrastructure. So we're really standing on the shoulders of So your, your stack is AWS, Adobe, and Red Hat, you yes, tell that's me? Right. And we, and so we run, talk about your stack a little bit. Yeah, what, yeah, what so, so really from uh, on, the, on the bottom layer, it's AWS, and then we have, uh, on the Red Hat side, we run Red Hat Enterprise Linux for our operating system, and then we have the Adobe Experience Manager, uh, formerly named CQ, uh, as the web content management system that sits on top of that. On the, on the bookends of that architecture, we've developed uh, lifecycle type management capabilities around the infrastructure provisioning and, and things like that so that we can automate the standing up of uh, server instances and deployments. Uh, and then on the other side, we've- So uh, you guys are together. DevOps shop, right? Yes, we're DevOps. Yeah. And, and that's really what our clients, uh, they contract with us to basically bring this custom software package into a software as a service type play. So they're just users of the technology. They author content, they activate content globally, uh, and we manage the operational aspects and, and then also the development implementation side of it. Yeah. So what are some of the cool techs that you're, you're tracking as a, as a CTO right now? What's, what's getting you excited? I mean, obviously, certainly the cloud <laughs> uh, and uh, mobile is, is really an interesting But the cloud's kind of old right? for you guys, yeah, right? It's yeah, yeah, old that, right? It's part of it, yeah. I mean, I think, I think all these technologies are definitely just continuing to evolve and, and define. Um, I, I, I really think that the mobile side is still is, although mature, it still has a lot of ways to go. I mean, as a, a mobile developer, we do a lot of mobile applications. You know, we're, we're seeing, you know, recurring issues of this app doesn't run very well on this device versus, you know, this other device, those type of yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, mobile apps really aren't very mature in a way. I mean, they are and they, they aren't, are, right? Yeah. They, they are as sort of bespoke apps that you, you yeah. maybe get in your iPhone, but as far as enterprise mobile apps, yeah. it's, you know, what, what are your customers asking you for in that regard? Are they asking for app stores? Are they asking for you to, just sort of help them take their 
you know, when I saw, often, often use the term, you know, pave the cow path, <laughs> yeah. take the existing yeah. apps and go mobile. What, what are you seeing out there? Well, I, I think it, it, goes in, it goes back and forth. It's going from native applications that are in app stores to a responsive uh, implementation, which is basically one, you know, web application that can serve a tablet, a mobile, and a, uh, a, a big browser, and it renders appropriately for that size of, of a device. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of that. I think clients still, our clients are still looking at it though as, you know, the big browser, main browser first, and then let's figure out the mobile app after that, where we're trying to talk to them more about mobile first, let's design it up front to support both, because later when you retrofit it, you do a lot of changes to your brand and, and how, how the content is Yeah, delivered. so I want to ask you about that. I mean, when you go to a mobile app, oftentimes it's just neutered, right? And you find the full site, right, and then yeah. you, you struggle through the full site. Are you seeing the, 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 your clients, are you able to help them build apps that are fully functional, you know, as functional, say, as a, as a full site? It's, it's, a, it's a challenge, it's a, it's a back and forth, because you want to bring all that capability out. You got to make trade-offs, right? But it sometimes fit. it's overwhelming, <laughs> right? It doesn't fit, doesn't perform, those type of things. So those are really conversations, like what's really important. And uh, contextual-based content as well, you know, I think is an exciting area where, you know, where you are and you go to the site, it's targeting you with that specific content you would be expecting to get, uh, you know, when you go to the site. So I think that's a very, uh, very cool, evolving um, area too is, you know, driving the right content at the right time in the right location, which again has been thought about and talked about for so long, but it's not seamless yet, you know, and how's Do you talk done. to any, any other peers in your uh, area about Amazon where it's like, hey, you're on Amazon, people come to you and ask you advice, like what's going on with Amazon, how easy it is to use. Do you talk to other folks about it? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And what's, what's, what do you guys, what do you tell them? Oh, it's a piece of cake, I mean, what's, what's, the, get, you know, what's the advice technically you tell them? Solid, certain requirements they need to do? I, I think the first thing I do is a lot of people are, are attracted to the cost savings. And I've always said that's, that's great too, but from a scalability, extensibility, you know, those perspectives, those are why you should look at, at the cloud, AWS specifically, uh, where they're at. Um, you know, certainly you always have good things to say, especially, I mean, if you're a large company or a small company, uh, yeah. AWS, great fit. Well, we heard yesterday the guy uh, talking about doing things they've never done before, or could do, with Amazon. Is there anything that surprised you about Amazon that you, you, you kind of go, wow, well, this wouldn't have been possible without uh, Amazon? Uh, sure, I think some of the scalability, some of this gen genome, the DNA sequencing and things like that, I don't think possible without a computing infrastructure like that, you know, and, and, and able to instantly stand it up. Yeah. Uh, so I, we were uh, we were at our booth, and somebody came by, and and we we're there. They said we need to come up with an application that uh, a, a capability for delivering very small bits of content, web content, in case of emergencies. You know, and I said, well, well what, what are you guys you know, guys doing on the application side? Where are you running it, and things like that? And like, well, we're building a brand new data center <laughs> to to support some of this, but I still need to have like this, you know, DR plan where you know, if that's dead, then I still need to deliver a message to the public or whatever. Like, well, what are you doing building you know, a data center right now? You, you probably should be looking at it in terms of just leveraging AWS for, for this and, and abandoning that whole, uh, that idea of a data yeah. center. Uh, then we went on to talk about you know, maybe the bandwidth costs for them are low and, and, and those type of things, but still, you just can't, you can't compete. I mean, uh, uh, we're getting a ch some chatter on our uh, CrowdChat application, and one of the comments is that a lot of talk about uh, cloud and infrastructure, but where's the big data conversation and analytics? So yeah. that's kind of being talked about, but not primarily. Um, I mean, the cloud enables you to do some things that just get better analytics, um, get the knowledge workers working. Um, do you have a lot of mobile usage uh, for your, uh, your workers? Mobility, yeah. is that big for you guys? Mo mobility is huge. Uh, for us and our, for clients. And the, the big data play for what we specialize in and that web experience management is everybody wants to know who's clicking on what, when, and they want to mash that data up with maybe purchase history and those other type of things. So what we're seeing is a lot of need to, to pull all it together, mine it in, in close to real time, and drive content, personalized content based on that. So idea. not necessarily, so ads or, or more It could be more ads content. or it could be just a, you know, you're shopping for a new pair of shoes and you know, that knows who you are, and maybe you went in and looked at high tops, and throughout the rest of your experience on the site, you're seeing high tops, and you're seeing maybe the previous pair that you've bought before, and it's targeting you that content that's going to make you want to convert much, you know, higher percentage conversions. So, so what are you doing there? You're taking sort of analytic data and, 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 and presenting it in near real time? That's right, yeah. And merging it essentially with transaction data at some point, right? Is right. That 
So we're closing the loop. You know, instead of getting all that data and then having it be mined off, off, uh, you know, off hours or in, in not real time, and then changing the content, we're saying, all right, as somebody's navigating through the site, let's get all this data, let's mash it up with other data in near real time, and then use that to target content right away. Because once the visitor leaves the site, they may not come by and come back and purchase. You know, much like how you know Amazon.com does things. Yeah. Matt, yeah. thanks for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. Hear your perspective, CTO perspective here at Amazon. Uh, reinvent. This is uh, you know the cloud game is seven years old for Amazon. Uh, I was commenting earlier. It's kind of top of the first inning. Dave's use our sports analogies, and they're all the rest of it was spring training as the game gets going. We're talking about EMC. So a lot of prospects out there for the enterprise business for Amazon. We're here, exclusive coverage here in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break.